Has anyone got any questions before we get started? No? Fantastic. Well, let's get started with the first pillar, which is speech structure. How you organize your content to convey your message. Speech structure is important, not only to make your information more easy to digest for your audience, but it'll also give you more confidence because it's a clear plan to follow. And if you have a plan to follow, you're much more likely to perform well instead of just showing up and winging it, okay? It also often determines the quality of your speech, so do not ignore speech structure. I think the most famous speech structure of all time came from this man, Winston Churchill. Does anyone know what his philosophy on speech structure was? Anyone at all? No? Basically, what he said to do when it came to making a speech was tell them what you're going to tell them for the intro, tell them, and then tell them what you've just told them. So it's pretty simplistic, but it's actually really effective. Really effective. But you don't need me to cover that today. Because, you know, it's pretty simplistic, you probably get it on your own. But what I would like to do is show you two other speech structures, which if done correctly, can be even more effective than Winston's. Would you like to hear what they are? Mm -hmm. Yeah? The first one is called the movie. The movie speech structure. By a raise of hands, who here likes movie trailers or teasers? Yeah? And would you agree that quite often they will determine whether you go and see a film or not? Yeah? yeah? That's quite powerful when you think about it. A 30 second clip will decide whether you go and pay your money to see a film or not. And we can use that same technique in our speeches by treating the first 30 seconds of the speech like a teaser. Like a teaser. Last week at Revitalize, some of you saw the speech. I did one, which was an, at a networking event, and it was all about confidence. I used this technique in that speech. So what I would like to do now is share with you the first 30 seconds to give you an idea of what a teaser is like and what it sounds like. But I would need someone to time me to make sure I'm in the, in the 30 second limit. Does anyone have a phone would be willing to time me? Yeah, perfect. Well, while you're getting set up, Charlie, this is the two things you should be looking for, okay? In a teaser, you need to inform the audience. You need to let them know what the speech is going to be about. What should they be prepared for? But don't give away too much information. And the second thing you need to do is hook. You need to hook your audience in some way so that they want to hear more. Are you ready, Charlie? Yeah. So when I start speaking, if you begin, that'd be great, okay? Becoming confident is like learning how to ride a bike. Growing up, you have stabilizers as support, but when removed, you fall, fall, and fall again. But each time you learn and grow until one day you find your rhythm, where your confidence is high, strong, and secure. Stop. Okay, would everyone agree that wasn't too fast? Yeah, reasonable pace? How did I do, Charlie? 25 seconds. Okay, made that, thank God. <laughs> that would have been awkward, right? <laughs> yeah, so what I would like you to do now is have a bash at making your own teaser. But of course, to do that, you're gonna have to have a speech. So we're gonna create one together right now. For this, I'm gonna need you to find, get into partners, or threes if you like. So if you could find a partner and number yourselves number one and two, that would be brilliant. So Chris, you can move along if you like. Everyone got a partner? You good, Paul? You got one? Yeah, super. You can just stay out there, Edward. <laughs> All right, number twos. Could you put your hand up, please? Everyone got two? Perfect. Congratulations, you've got the fun job. In the next few uh, moments, what I would like you to do is tell your partner a story. Now this story can only be 90 seconds long and it must include three key elements. And they are George Square, a can of iron brew, and a very bold seagull, okay? <laughs> now you've only got 90 seconds, all right? So no time to waste here, but go as wild as you possibly want to go. And then we'll come back and I'll tell you what the next step is. Is everyone ready? Okay, three, 
two, one, you may begin. Okay, everyone, if you stop there, perfect. Did you manage to come up with a story, David? Did you get one? <laughs> okay, that'll be enough, that'll be enough. So here's the next step. In your pairs, I would now like you to come up with a teaser for that story, okay? Now, I'm not looking for a 30 second teaser because it's only, it's only 90 seconds, but maybe a 10 second or 15 second teaser would be ideal. The two things you wanna do in this is you want to inform, all right? Let us know what the rest of that story will be about in that 15 seconds. And also hook us, make us want to hear more more about what that story will be about. Is everyone clear on what they have to do? Yeah? Fantastic. I'm gonna give you 90 seconds again to come up in your pairs. You can write it down if you want. You can just practice it out however you want to do it. Right, let's begin now. Okay, everyone, so the question is, who will be willing to share their, tr their teaser with the group? Yeah, Chris? Yeah. yeah? Would you like to come up or would you want to just do it there? Perfect. So 15 or 10 seconds, on you go. Go for 10 seconds. So it was a dark evening in November. There was fizzy drinks involved and there was a terrifying flying object. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think? Did Chris's teaser inform us? Yeah, it gave us some in context. We know it's going to be in November, it's dark. And there was a fizzy drink, right? Did it intrigue us? The fizzy drink, yeah. Very well done, Chris, absolutely. Would anyone else like to have a go, share? Want to try? Ah, give it a go, yeah, come on up. <laughs> Whenever you're ready, Tracy. I want to invite you to come to Glasgow to visit a famous landmark and be aware of the feathered locals and their favorite drink. Oh, there we go. That was good, wasn't it? Nice, nice. Brilliant. Feathered locals, I like that imagery. Very nice, yeah. Anyone else like a go? Yeah, Paul? Uh, did you hear about Brad Pitt and his spot who had done for drinking alcohol in public in Glasgow? Ooh, well, that's certainly a statement. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's certainly intriguing, I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we need to work on the informative side, but that's what we need to do for the first 30 seconds. We need to inform and intrigue our audience and you can use this whatever presentation you've got. Once you've prepared it, just think about how you can summarize that in 30 seconds to achieve those two goals. In more detail, this is what the full structure looks like. So we've got our teaser, our 30 seconds. Now we need the showing in the middle. This is where you play out whatever you've mentioned in the teaser. So if it's gonna be about Brad Pitt, we need to see Brad Pitt in the middle, okay? Because if you think about it logically, right? If you go and watch a teaser for a film, say Die Hard 6, and then you really like it, so you go to the cinema, you're in the row, you're waiting for Die Hard 6 to come on and then SpongeBob SquarePants shows up, it's gonna be pretty strange, isn't it? Not gonna go down well with the critics. So you need to make sure that what is ever in your teaser aligns with your main content. And then for the very last bit, the ending, is a callback. This is where we refer back to the start of the speech, but also add in that take home message you want to deliver to the audience. Is that almost like a summary? It's almost like a summary, yes, David. But what we're doing is just adding in that key message at the end there. Um, so referring back to the start, but adding in the message. I'll give you the demonstration of how my speech ended, the one about confidence. So this is how it ended. Becoming confident is like learning how to ride a bike. Without doubt, you will fall. But if you can be your own savior, try even when you're afraid and have a vision which drives you to take action, you will find the courage to get back on that bike and find your rhythm where your confidence is high, strong, and secure. So do you see how that had elements of the beginning? I spoke about the bike, falls, the regaining, but I also had in the message there of, you know, having that vision, being your own savior, and trying even when you're afraid. So that's what you want to look to do for the callback. Does anyone have any questions with regards to the movie speech structure? So to link it to Winston Churchill's mm -hmm. 
turn and turn and turn again. Mm -hmm. It's the teeter is the time that you're going to turn, the show is the tell them, and then the callback is the tell what you just told. It's similar, but with Winston Churchill's, you tell them exactly what they're going to hear. Right. So there's no surprises it's to come, it's basically. It's yeah, it's, it's intriguing people further, and then the showing kind of builds towards that key message at the end, which is delivered. That's the main difference between the two. Yeah. So are you saying, Kyle, that this is a more effective structure mm -hmm. than what Winston Churchill used yeah. effectively? To do it like this, you will get far better engagement from the audience. Yeah, because what happens with Winston's, and I'll, I'll refer back to this later in the presentation, is when you're just summing up at the end, it, it seems like a, a summary for a, a, an essay, right? It's kind of boring because you've already heard what he's telling you. But this, you're hearing something new at the end. And it's kind of building towards that in a way at the same time. And you're not telling them exactly what they're going to hear at the start. So that brings about that intrigue. You see what I mean? Yeah? OK. I'll move on to the second type of speech structure, then, unless there's any other questions. Good. OK. This one's called the journey. This involves taking your audience